Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I'm going to be solving the 2017 Advent of Code problem one. And each problem actually has two parts to it, so this is just the first part. But if you haven't heard of Advent of Code, I'd recommend you look it up. It's a fun little set of programming problems that come out every year, 25 days before Christmas, with a couple problems a day, up until Christmas. Uh, that being said, this video is going to contain spoilers. I'm actually solving the problem. There's only one solution, so if you're not looking to have the actual answer given to you, don't watch this video. This is meant to be educational on how you might go about solving it in F-sharp. It's not meant to give you the answers so that you can plug them in. That's cheating. So, the very first problem is this reverse CAPTCHA program, uh, problem. There's a little bit of a header here saying that all the stars got lost and you got to find them and yada, yada, yada. Um, but the actual problem is... And if you read it, you can see really here is the core. Find the sum of all digits that match the next digit in the list. The list is circular, so the very last digit kind of is paired up with the first digit. So, for example, 1122 produces 3 because you see there's a pair of 1s here, so that's a 1. A pair of 2s here, so that's a 2. And you want to sum them all together to make 3. This one right here produces 4 because you have a pair of 1s, that's 1. A pair of 1s, that's 2 pair of ones that's three and then the list is circular so really the first and the last are paired together that's four and so on and so forth here the only pair we have is on the ends and it's the number nine so the answer is nine so i'm going to be doing this in f sharp of course and i'll just get started so i'm going to scroll down to get the problem input um the answer is printed i can't i don't think i can hide it so sorry about that um just kind of cover your eyes for a second if you really want to I guess it doesn't really matter if you're watching this video. Basically, when I solve these problems, I think some people tend to get caught up on things like, oh, how do I read the input? How do I get to a file? I don't really care. I'm a little, uh, a little lazy, so I kind of just usually paste the whole input into the into my code file as a string, and this usually works okay. I find my my kind of general theory here is that if it works, it works. Um, we're looking for one specific answer, so why not just paste it in? You know, kind of the, the Excel problem-solving mentality, if you will. So what I'm going to do is basically, algorithmically, I'm going to calculate the answer, of course. And the answer, I'm going to use going to use the input, of course. And what I'd like to do is I would like to, for every pair inside of this list, so here's a pair, for example. Here's another pair, for example. Here's another pair. I would like to compare them, and if they are the same, I would like to sum them. So, pretty simple algorithm overall. Uh, I'm going to use this awesome function that's built into F Sharp's Seek module, and that is the pairwise function, which transforms a Seek into a sequence of pairs, which is exactly what we want. Now, one thing that this won't do for us, and we'll handle that later, is handle these end bits, right? And you can even cheat a little bit with this specific input. You can see 8 and 8 are the same. So you know, even if you don't compare them programmatically, you can add an 8 in the end and get the right answer, right? I'm not going to do that. I am going to do it programmatically just for kicks and gigs. Um, but anyways, so I'm, I want pairwise of it, a pairwise of the input. And then what I want to do is a seek dot sum by, which will just calculate the sum of a sequence where there's some special function which calculates the actual value that you want to add to the sum for each thing. So for each value, we're getting a pair. So I can actually destructure that pair right inside of my anonymous function. Thank you, F sharp. That is very cool. Now I want to ask if A equals B, then, well, I can return either one, really. I can return A or B. Otherwise, I want to return zero. So this will sum them up. Counting is zero if they aren't the same. If they are the same, it'll actually add that value in. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then there's a caveat here where at the very end, I've basically got to say, let's see, what do I have to say? I've got to say if the head and the tail match, then sum in the eight. And like I said, you really could just add eight. We know it's eight here, right? It's really easy to see that but I'm gonna actually do it programmatically and I'm gonna do it a little overboard programmatically. So if this confuses you, don't worry about it. It's annoying. Um, you could just add a and get the answer. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna build kind of a general function, which I could reuse if I really wanted to, which will deal with 
the sameness, the idea of sameness of head and tail. It's a very specific function, but it's a little more general than this problem actually needs. As we can see, we see the value eight, right? So I'm gonna build a function called if head is last. So if head and last are the same, that's basically what it's saying. Um, and I'm gonna take in a sequence, which I'll be taking an input. And basically what I wanna do is I want to provide two functions. Uh, it's, this is kind of an if else almost. If you look at even a real if else in F sharp, you can kind of consider it to be a function, right? It takes a bool here, and then if that evaluates to true, it'll evaluate this part. But if it evaluates to false, it'll do that. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Basically, the idea is if had and last are the same thing, then what do I want to do? Well, I would like to basically take in whatever my current sum is. So I'll just call that... Um, I don't know, I'll call that X. And then I'll take in an example of the head or the tail. I'll just call it H for head. So basically, if they're the same, give me one of them. It doesn't matter which one, because they're the same. So if they're the same, give me them, and then I'll just add it on, which of course, in this case, we'll always add A, because our input is always that. Um, otherwise, I just want whatever value was passed through. So really, you might have a function that looks like this on the end, where if the head and the tail aren't the same, or if there is no head or tail, because that can actually happen, right? You can have an empty sequence. Just return the value you were given, because this is a pipe, right? So the value is going to come through and get piped into the end. So this is a little arbitrary, a little contrived. Um, let's print out answer. And I think there's a little more that I have to do here. Um, yeah, there will be. Because if you look, I'm doing things here like adding, right? I'm adding. Um, I'm saying that whatever this A is in these pairs is compatible with an int, which it's not. So basically what that means is I kind of want to take my input and convert it over to an int. So to do that, I'm going to do a good old uh, seek.map. And I'm going to map um, a function that I'm just going to call parse int. And let's define parse int. Let parse int. What it's going to do is it's going to take a character. If you didn't know this, in F sharp, you can treat a string like a sequence of characters, which is pretty cool, actually. So it's gonna take a character and return back an int. And basically, what, what's that gonna do? Well, it's gonna turn the character into a string first, and then it's gonna parse an int from that string. Now, the reason we have to do string here is if you just try to parse an int of a character, it'll return the ASCII value, which isn't the actual numeric value that we care about. So this is good. Um, I'm pretty sure the last thing that I have to write now is I have to fill in this function. So let's do that. So let's try to do this from what we have here. We have some input sequence, I'll call it S. Then we have kind of our different branches, which really are represented by these guys right here. Um, I'll call this the conclusion. I'll call this the alternative. I don't know, that's probably not great language. It's close to the right language, but not perfect. So what I want to do is I want to match um, seek.tryhead of sequence and seek.trytail of sequence. And that'll just guarantee, whoa, that was weird. That was super weird. Okay. That will simply guarantee that I'm not doing anything dangerous. Like if I got in, in real, real code, if I got a empty sequence, I can't get the header tail. That would break, right? I can't just grab that out. So if I have some value, um, let's just call it head, some tail, let's just call it L. Although, actually, you know what? They call this, this isn't tail, this is called last. I was getting my Haskell a little bit confused. F sharp calls that last. And then if they're the same, so if head equals last, then we want to call the conclusion on head. And I said earlier on our overall answer, which is this X thing on the end, else we want to call our alternative alt of, we can't, we don't have a head in this case, or we do have a head, but it's not the same. So I'm just gonna call it with X. Now, if we get to the other, any other case, if we don't have a head or a tail, well, we can't really compare them for sameness. So what we want to do in that case is just call 
our alternative case. So let's go ahead and run this and see how well I did. I have sharp eye on this file. Okay, and it ran and it gave me the correct answer. I've already plugged this in, this is the right answer. So before I conclude, I'd like to do two things really quick. I just want to simplify these two functions right here because they are much simpler forms. So a function that just takes a value and returns the value is actually defined for you in F-sharp and that's called ID. So I can actually replace this with ID. This function over here, you'll, you'll notice all we're doing is adding, right? And one thing, if you didn't know this, if you have an infix function like plus, you can make it a prefix function by wrapping it in parentheses. So I can do this, drop it in parentheses, and then basically you'll notice that you have the same thing on both sides here, and kind of like your algebra in school, basically what that's saying is, this is a little bit redundant, like, you don't need all of this, so actually you can do that. And let's just run it really quick and make sure it still works. And it still does, awesome. So this was the first part of the first problem of Advent of Code 2017.